What are the biggest mistakes beginning editors make? Hmm, there's so many. Uh, I, I think that you know the big some of the biggest mistakes that beginning editors make is to uh, be fearful to make a cut. You know, be fearful to just dive in and start and start experimenting and 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 playing with the material and looking at uh, at it as something that that you can play with and uh, and have fun with. I think a lot of people are afraid to jump in and make that cut. Um, on another level, I think for myself, maybe, you know, I, I, I think that it was ego issues, kind of thinking, because I had come from these legendary editors who, you know, had such an incredible body of work that I thought that, you know, as an editor, you have to like stand by your cut and, you know, and maybe not be so flexible and stuff like that. and. You know, that's sort of like the antithesis of what I believe an editor is now. I think that you have to be incredibly flexible. And, you know, I think the more flexible you are, the more you're going to be able to get your ideas across. So um, I, think, I think that's sort of a, a big mistake. And then, you know, I think that a lot of us as editors, although I don't really consider myself an introvert, I think a lot of editors are introverted and maybe younger editors don't understand the importance of getting out there and meeting other people and networking and putting yourself out there. Um, those are a few of the kind of, I think, the mistakes that people make. Um, the other, the, maybe one more would be like young editors, you know, uh, maybe not young editors, but young people starting out, uh, maybe they've come out of film school, maybe they've made a few films on their own, but they're just getting into the business and they're just sort of like maybe trying to break in or get their foot in the door. And uh, they talk about like their films and things like that. I think that a lot of people don't wanna hear about that kind of stuff. They, they want you to do what you need to do, like go get office supplies and get the lunch order correct. Um, they don't wanna hear about your screenplays at that time. You know, there's a time and place for everything, of course, but, uh, that's sort of a general thing for people just sort of breaking into editing. Do you think the prior school of thought was to stand by, just as a writer is going to defend the notes that they're given and, and want to do the scene their way, was that sort of the prior school of thought of defend your cut, I want to do it here when he comes in the door this way and the producer saying no, do it after, you know, was that sort of the, the prior yeah, thought? Yeah, I, I, I do think that that is sort of like a, you know, a throwback from a from an earlier time, you know, when the auteur theory maybe sort of, you know, prevailed stronger and uh, people were able to kind of, or, or people, you know, were, were able to stand by their artistic vision. I think the business has become much more of a commercial endeavor for the most part. I think that if you uh, get involved in a film, with that sort of artistic vision these days that um, I think, you know, maybe like the people who hire you and everything, they everybody's cards are on the table, so it's not. Um, but again, I, you know, as editors, we're, we're service people. Uh, we're there to help the director uh, have his or her vision, you know, realized. So, um, you know, there's plenty of times where I don't think that maybe a scene works as good after doing the director's notes, uh, but it's it's their baby, you know, and we're there to help them out. Um, I've learned as I've gotten older that you get a lot more uh, bees with honey than vinegar, and there's different ways to present your ideas. Uh, other than drawing a line in the sand. And, you know, that's usually through dialogue or conversation or example, maybe integrating some of the ideas from, you know, your instincts into theirs and maybe showing that to them as an alternative. Um, I think you win a lot of like little battles that way and, and 
you know, I, I think that a lot of directors are also reasonable, the good ones, that when you say, you know, that, you know that's kind of a inelegant cut was the way Lindsay Klingman used to put it. And uh, I think that's a tasteful way to put it across. You know, it's not a bad cut. It's just not pretty. Um, I, th I think that, you know, good filmmakers are, are open to that. You're always going to get people who will, you know, just not want to, you know, hear your opinion, even if you're right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's like a marriage. You know, it's like you're not going to be able to be married to everyone and you got to find the right, you know, set of people that you're going to be able to work with, that you get along with, that you have some chemistry with. It's a real sort of, you know, marriage-like relationship because you're, you're locked in a room with that director for, for months on end. So you better have some chemistry together. You better like each other or you're going to be miserable. <laughs>